call the work session of the Portsmouth City Council on Monday, December the 11th, 2017, to order. Madam Clerk, please call the roll, please. Yes, sir. Mr. Cherry? Here. Mr. Clark? Here. Mrs. Lucas Burke? Here. Mr. Moody? Here. Ms. Simmons? Dr. Whitaker? Present. Mayor Rowe? Here. And tonight is a joint meeting between the City Council and the Planning Commission, and because the Planning Commission only has two members <coughs> present due to uh, some emergencies that came up, uh, Mr. City Attorney, they don't need to convene, do they? That's correct, Mayor. Okay. Well, then, Dr. Patton. Yes. Mayor, Vice Mayor, and members of City Council, Tonight, the update of the city's comprehensive plan, known as Bill 1 Portsmouth, is entering its final stages. Similar to your previous joint work session in July, the purpose of tonight's meeting is for the City Council and Planning Commission to discuss and provide feedback on the latest phase of the plan. <coughs> Mrs. Emily Crow, the project manager from the city's consultant team of McBride Dale Clarion, will brief you on the initial draft of proposed strategies for achieving the goals contained within the updated plan. The initial stages are for multiple sources to include citizens' input, current comprehensive plan, planning best practices, and ultimately input from City Council and the Planning Commission doing this public outreach effort. As Mrs. Crow works through each goal, we encourage you to ask questions and provide feedback so that we may further refine each future policy. These strategies will form the playbook for what the city should focus efforts on over the life of the five-year plan, as well as a tool for evaluating future development proposals. Tonight's meeting represents a milestone in the planning process as we move forward the actual drafting of the city's comprehensive plan document over the next several months. The second presentation, the city attorney, Solomon Ashu, will provide an update on the efforts in addressing panhandling parades and demonstration ordinances in a revised timetable for discussion and your approval. And lastly, the city attorney, Mr. Solomon Ashby, will provide an update on the status of the case, Virginia International Gateway versus the city of Portsmouth. Mrs. Crow. Thank you all this evening for having me here again. Um, I really appreciate the time on your uh, agenda this evening. Um, <coughs> As was stated, I think we're at a great milestone with this process. Um, over the last, since I last met with you all, I believe in July, um, we have been working very hard both across the city departments as well as reaching out to the public to talk about what um, we called it, it, that phase the framework for the plan. Um, and at that point we had developed the guiding principles, the value statements, the vision for where the city wanted to go in the future, and we had had goal statements that we worked with you all to refine at that point. Um, in October we took those goal statements to the public with the specific ask of them, what do you think we need to be doing to reach these goals? We had a really great work session. Um, I think several of you may have attended that and saw um, how people worked. We had a really, I was super pleased with the participation that we got. Um, we didn't get a thousand responses, but we got some really good ideas from the public about what they think we could be doing to reach the goals and the vision that has been set out. Um, so Brian and I have been working for the last couple months sifting through some four or five hundred ideas and statements about how we could be achieving this vision for Portsmouth. And what we have tried to do is categorize those into strategies or ways that we could achieve that goal and then try to identify underneath that actual tactics or actions and steps that we can take that are real and very attainable. Um, we don't want this plan to be so far reaching that we can't achieve it. Um, and so what I want to talk with you all about tonight is where we are with those strategies 
and take your feedback about where you think we've hit the nail on the head and we're right on target or where you think that there might be room to add some strategies to these goals to achieve them and then from there what we are going to do is we're going to start fleshing that out with those tactics we're going to take your direction and we're going to write the narrative of the plan and that narrative is going to include things from maps and graphics and explanations of more complex um, recommendations, things like complete streets or um, placemaking, things that may not be common vocabulary for people, but things that we've talked about and people are indicating that they would like to see those ideas pursued. <coughs> so where we are tonight, if I can get this remote to work, um, is that we have this preliminary list and this has come from the discussion from the department heads it has come from input from the public and it has come from all of the work that we have done up to this point and moving forward um, we are still operating under our four vision themes uh, so the first one is thriving and we talk about drawing from the rich history of the city to promote healthy individuals, local economies, regional collaboration, and vibrant neighborhoods with strong identities. And each of these, this statement, this vision statement that we want to achieve, we've established a series of goal statements underneath that. So the first one is we want to achieve a position of influence within the Hampton Roads region. And so we need strategies of how we're going to get there. And I don't want to go through all of these. I hope that you all have had some opportunity to look at these. We did send them out a little bit in advance. But I'll go through a couple of these. And then what I would really like to do is have you all give me your thoughts about what's missing from these lists. If you have ideas for maybe the next level down, like a tactic or an approach that we might use, please feel free to share that. Do you have those in any particular order? They aren't in any particular order so we can prioritize if you think that there are things that are more important or more achievable um, we certainly can talk about that as well so um, it's up to you all we can go through a couple of the thriving goals or if you want to just take them one by one yes, sir. Uh, in the interest of time would it would council be open to um, adjusting this as far as um, council submitting our additions to the team because we were given the documents and uh, some of us may have made some additions and if we're going to go through each one of these additions tonight that could be a pretty lengthy process. Um, should we submit them and have them edit them to this and then we can all review the additions and then comment on whether to include the additions or not? Okay. What do y'all think? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Let, let me come back on the review. Yeah. Let me come back. Yeah. Let, come let, back. We'll let uh, <laughs> the treasurer elect come back. He, he can submit his. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> man, I might try to sound heroic, but I've already given Dr. Patton mine, and so why don't we all endeavor to give mm -hmm. our to Dr. Mm -hmm. Patton mm -hmm. so that you can give it to the consultant yes. and do exactly. I think that's a very good plan. Mm -hmm. Everybody in agreement on that? Yes. Yes. What about our colleagues? Well, we're, we're not going to discuss our individual uh, additions? We'll have some input. Well, uh, what my suggestion was is let them compile it for us and then come the, back. Yeah, then okay. they can submit it to us to review. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm good with that. Mm -hmm. Would you like to go through kind of each set of goals and, and talk a little bit about them, or? That would be good. Yeah. Just to have some general discussion without specific sure. edits. Okay, so um, again, so we have. Excuse me, mm -hmm, let's certainly. be clear. Um, the assignment for us is to give Submit. Dr. Patton mm -hmm. our completed forms. Mm -hmm. And from the completed forms, we will take each of the council's submissions, include them in the document in the proper areas under the themes, and from there provide back to council a full um, document of all of your comments within. And from there, you all will review and we will come back with planning and have a discussion of these items that you've submitted. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Then I'll go with me to bring this back 
in January because we they are moving, so we've got to keep yeah. this moving. And, and just so I'm clear, the. Uh, these strategies were citizen generated? Some of them have been citizen generated. Some of them have come from best practices that okay. we we're aware of. So we were trying to address um, what we had heard at this point in the process. Okay. The reason I'm asking mm -hmm. is because when we receive this document again, can the input from council be included in the box so that we'll know that this That's is council input? input. Okay, and we now. could do that. So we could, yeah, we can either do a color, different color, so uh, that yeah. we know that these are council added. Okay. or um, we can highlight them in a box. Okay. okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Good, good comments. Yes. Good. Thank you for your suggestion. Okay. Can I add, because um, okay. I, I, I went to the work session, I was there mm -hmm. uh, with the community citizens, um, so I heard some of the overview mm -hmm. and some of mine are already <coughs> included in there as mm -hmm. well, um, but I'll, you know, extract some of my ideas and, and put how I came to this to the decision that I made yeah. on it. And I can also make all of the public comments available to you all so you can see them in their raw form. Um, you don't have to go through them, but I do want, to, want you to know that they're available. Um, so, so again, we were trying to come up with these strategies to, to meet each of these goal statements that we had put out there. Um, and so this achieving the uh, position of influence within Hampton Roads. We talk about assigning staff to regional boards and commissions, which I think is a really, um, you know, a proactive approach to that. Um, definitely advocating for the city of Portsmouth on regional issues. Um, prioritizing local resources towards um, those regional projects that benefit the city. Um, partnering and coordinating with your surrounding cities um, and so we've tried you know kind of a multifaceted approach to doing that um, the next one which is t2 which is how else do we become thriving we learn from our unique history and culture and this is one um, that you know Brian and I have spent some time trying to look through this and, and flush this one out I think this one has some room for um, improvement so I hope all that you all have um, maybe thought about this one a little bit um, but we want to promote modern development but reflect Portsmouth's unique history um, we want to embrace our identity as part of the city's future um, we don't want to lose what makes us Portsmouth um, we want to maintain a high level of quality and compatibility in development and redevelopment uh, we want to reduce blighting influences and capture reinvestment while preserving and building on historical neighborhood assets um, and again, this one, I think a lot of this one will be in the details of the tactics. How do we, how do we actually do these things? Um, we want to expand economic opportunity. So the next option here. Um, so we want to think about things like adopting business-friendly practices and um, acquiring and preparing land near the ports or in other economic development areas. Um, we want to promote in the de development of entrepreneurial support systems um, to kind of grow that local business economy. Um, we think we should probably conduct an audit of the city's regulatory and administrative barriers to successful infill and redevelopment projects. Um, and a series of other things here, things like maintaining and strengthening viable land uses and development patterns. Um, addressing obsolete land uses, etc. A lot of these came from your current plan. And because we are doing an update, we didn't want to forget what the city's already doing or has been working on. And so we tried to pull forward those, those recommendations and that was all the result of an audit that was done on the current plan. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Can you talk a little bit about actively engaged in property acquisition? Yes, so one of the things that um, from a, when we talk about, you know, expanding economic opportunity, one of the things that communities across the country use as a tool in that is to actively prepare economic development sites that you want to see change happen on. Um, and so we didn't say specifically how that happens, but we feel that the city should be an active partner in that process because if you know where that available land is or what that site is and you can help get it prepared so that a business or development can come in, then that's a, that's, that's a big feather in your cap in terms of, you know, 
being, I guess, friendly for economic development. Does that? Yeah, I, I, I guess my, 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 I was just thinking about we, we are active, engaged in doing something with the property we already own. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of that. Right, so, got a so, lot of so, so, so somewhere in there, we need to add that in because the city owns a lot of property now that we. That yeah, we, that's actually the last the last bullet here, which is collaborate with city departments to dispose of excess property in a strategic manner. The maybe another way of saying that would be, you know, interdepartmental collaboration to return vacant land to, to, the, the, tax to the market. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we're, we're working on some refinements there, but that's definitely part of it. This development should be smart development. It doesn't mean fill up whatever available land is with, with junk. Mm -hmm. right. With anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay, get it right the first time. Yeah, yeah. And we have some other other strategies in here that I think help cover that aspect in terms of quality of development and compatibility of development. Like you want something that that works with the community and not just anything that is interested in that location. Um, anything else on that one? Okay. Um, T4 is have an educated and engaged population. And I think this is a really great one. Um, and But it's a little bit of a challenge because as a city, how do you, how does the city find a way to educate and engage their population? Because a little bit is that of that is on the population. Um, so one of the things that we talked about is finding ways to promote lifelong learning experiences. And this has some variations if we look through all the input that we've received. Some of them talk about lifelong educational pathways, like you know having choices throughout life. And so some of those things may become tactics under that. Um, lots of collaboration between your institutional organizations, libraries, schools, health organizations, um, to make sure that the public is as engaged and educated as possible. Um, enhancing the city neighborhood communications through a community development function in the planning and or economic development department. Um, this is something that we've heard from different neighborhood organizations. The civic leagues have shown a resurging interest in becoming more involved. Um, and so it just feels like a lot of the other strategies in here would benefit from someone who's focused on that neighborhood aspect of community development. And so that's where that one came from. Um, again, fostering grassroots neighborhood programs and organizations, including the civic leagues. And again, taking some of some of the effort that the city is putting out to support those grassroots efforts instead of internalizing everything at the top, I think is a really good strategy for us to think about. Um, communicate with and involve citizens in the city government affairs, programs, and initiatives. And again, some of it's transparency and communication. Some of it is actively involving them in those processes, which you've all done very well with this planning process. And we did the D2 area and had great participation. So things like that just need to continue. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, Mayor, with the um, have an educated and engaged population, in the late 1980s and into, into the 90s, and some at the table may remember, the city had a very strong, and one of the strongest in the region, uh, community education programs. Um, that um, The programs and the classes were held at um, Churchland Middle, and there were probably about in the course of each semester about 40 to 45 classes, which some were fee classes and others were um, free classes from parenting to a babe, how to be a baby, all kinds of classes we offered. We received state and federal recognition for those programs and that broad community education program that we had. And we had in Parks and Recreation a whole um, um, office Wendy Ballou and a team of people actually worked with the schools and offered, I see Ms. Pittenger sitting back there, she can remember, offered community education classes. Cities are going back to that in the need to engage um, uh, the community and uh, help to further um, skills and abilities in areas for the community. So I think that's something definitely as we look forward, we need to try to 
find ways to engage the public in classes that are interested and uplift uh, our community. Um, the next is uh, foster a creative and cultural environment that supports the arts and education. Um, and on this one, we want to continue to emphasize the importance of museums, libraries, and the arts. Um, we want to celebrate our heritage and festivals and events. Um, encourage civic art programs that highlight the city's unique culture and heritage. Um, support placemaking by incorporating arts, culture, and innovation into programming for business districts, public spaces, and neighborhoods. Um, and then this, the, the final one here, and I'm looking at a slightly different list, but this last one was something that was brought up in the, the public input, um, and that was to achieve and maintain accreditation um, for the public schools here. Um, and so, so that is something that we're looking at for the thriving aspects. Um, and then I believe the final, yes, the final thriving goal is to be a healthy city. And to be a healthy city is a lot of different things. It's not just, you know, good personal health. It's some about the environment. It's some about um, what people have access to. Uh, and so on this one, we're looking at ensuring access to fresh and healthy foods, promoting walking and biking as both recreational and transportation options, um, promoting healthy work and social environments and balancing job creation and increasing the tax base with considerations on the quality of life and the community character, um, establishing and improving, and I called it vector control. You may have a different term for it here, um, but you know, controlling mosquitoes, and I think we talked about continuing that because it's something that the city already is doing. Um, and then establishing programmatic connections between the health department and the Portsmouth Public Schools to improve knowledge and access to healthy initiatives. So any other thoughts just kind of generally about the, the idea of being a thriving community and these, these set of goals? All right. Okay, well we'll move on then to being resilient. And in Resilient, we prepare for long-term prosperity by thoughtfully creating adaptable structures, systems, and practices to prepare for opportunities and to meet challenges. Um, and again, this is, I think of Resilient as being flexible and adaptable. Um, <clears throat> so we're looking to work towards mitigating the impacts of climate change. It was one of the kind of top issues that I think came up here. Um, so we're talking about preparing hazard mitigation plans for the city with a focus <coughs> on resiliency during flood events, um, enhance disaster preparedness and recovery programs for those um, instances. Um, we want to, and I've we've tinkered with the language a bit on this, but do a risk assessment of all your critical assets, um, your hospitals, your emergency services, and make sure that those things are in places where they can still provide services in an emergency situation. Um, we want to integrate the idea of resiliency planning across citywide and regional transportation plans. And that's happening at the region, and I think it's it's happening here as well, so continuing that effort. Um, we want to try to encourage sustainable green building technologies and design approaches, um, prepare resiliency plans for the public facilities and land. So there might be a overall management plan for you know, all of the land, but there may also be a, a discrete function that you look at for the public facilities as well. Um, and then improving the quality of Portsmouth water resources. Um, the next resilient thing talks or goal speaks to diversifying your tax base and employment opportunities. So we don't want to just be environmentally resilient, we want to be fiscally resilient as well. Um, and to do that, we talk about integrating. Um, well, actually, this top one, I think, is actually misplaced. It should be an R1 under the environmental um, mitigation. But um, we also talk about providing geographically targeted incentives um, for uh, diversity of housing and land uses so that you're not just... Um, we're, we're going to think strategically about this. And in, in the last meeting, I showed you a focus area map 
where we had taken a lot of public comment about places where people felt the most concerned about change and then we also overlaid that with where we knew t there to be vacants and under vacancies and underutilized properties and so that together with the strategy kind of helps us to focus efforts um, where it's most needed. Um, promote economic growth by focusing on business development and retention, community development, workforce development, and the I, I believe Brian and I talked about this, it's actually business retention is your focus right now. Um, but we have here those economic development sites to have them shovel ready. Um, we want to focus on key business sectors. This is something that's in a little bit of transition. We have um, two, two sources that we're focusing on. One is the current economic development focuses, which are really specific and targeted. And then we did a <coughs> economic development analysis for the region and for the city. And that identified much broader sectors, which are listed here. Um, and so we're, we're thinking that those just need a little bit of massage. Um, as we work through this. And, um, and then those focus areas, we want to identify the critical areas where we want to focus economic development efforts. Um, and then any opportunities to collaborate with the Port Authority, the railroads, these major transit and federal military installations for those economic development opportunities that you have uniquely here in Portsmouth. Um, the third resiliency, uh, goal is to practice fiscal responsibility. So what are our strategies to do that? We want to improve links between capital improvements and administrative decisions based on the recommendations in this comprehensive plan. So use this to kind of prioritize and strengthen that decision making um, structure. Um, design new transportation projects for better resiliency and flooding events. Uh, and rising sea levels, which we know are both on everyone's mind. Um, coordinate city programs and initiatives to promote economic vitality and resiliency in alignment with the vision for the future. Um, again, that's, you know, it's a little bit economic development, but we're also focusing on that fiscal balance there. Um, and then establishing an officer of resiliency to coordinate the sustainability and resiliency efforts across city departments so that you're not duplicating efforts um, and becoming more resilient. Um, our fourth uh, resiliency strategy is to strengthen connectivity and improve mobility. So the more mobile people are, the more connected we are, the more resilient we are. Um, so we want to work with HRT to enhance the transit routes. We want to adapt our urban form and infrastructure as driverless vehicles become more of a norm. Um, we want to improve the safety and accessibility of walking and trails and sidewalks for bikes. Um, we want to connect our land use development decisions to transportation networks and capabilities. Um, and we want to, again, enhance those transit services to those targeted areas so that it makes it more viable. Um, resiliency goal number five is to increase. Let's stop just yeah. one second. Yeah. We have a uh, planning I mean, commissioner has come in, so we've met the threshold requirement to, okay. for you to call. The yes, sir. Mr. <laughs> uh, acting Chairman. Acting Chairman. Uh, I'm Peter Youngblood, Acting Chairman of the Planning Commission. I hereby call this meeting to order. <coughs> call the roll, please. Yes. Commissioner Williams. Commissioner Thompson. Commissioner Youngblood. Here. Commissioner Hoffler. Here. Commissioner G. Here. Commissioner Thaxton. Three members of the Planning Commission are present. Thank you. Thank you. I apologize. Oh, of course. Um, so um, we'll just pick up here. Uh, so we're, we're going to increase the green space in the city. That's another uh, goal for becoming more resilient. Um, so we talk about using green spaces to limit the re or reduce the urban heat islands. Um, we want to promote green design and infrastructure in our development practices so that everything becomes more green. Um, encourage the inclusion of open spaces in new development or redevelopment. And that one at this, oh, 
Yeah. We're a couple behind. Yeah, we're okay. there. We go. Um, Sorry. Oh, one more. Okay. <laughs> so this one, this one's pretty concise because we're talking very specifically about increasing green spaces. So the strategies aren't as broad, um, but we'll work on the tactics to help make those things a reality. All right, so on to our next theme of evolving, which I really like this one too, because I think, I actually love all the vision themes for this plan. I think it's very, very thought forward and it's inspiring, I believe. Um, so involving, we're embracing the future and responding positively to emerging opportunities to care for the people and places we love by balancing historic preservation with thoughtful reinvestment and redevelopment. And again, this speaks a lot to what people said they care about in this community. Um, and we want to move forward, but we don't want to lose who we are as a place. Um, so to do that, we want to promote a renaissance of our neighborhoods. And you've done a lot in a lot of neighborhoods that have kept them very stable, but let's think about the whole city, about these neighborhoods. And so, again, we come back to the idea of focusing on community development and housing and not just thinking about economic development and land use, but these are things that are kind of internal to how we think about our neighborhoods. Um, we want to enhance the role and functions of the civic leagues and establish neighborhood planning programs. Um, undertake promotional activities to elevate the experience and reputation of challenged neighborhoods and engage with the local real estate community to increase the promotion of these neighborhoods. It's kind of an identity and image aspect of that. Um, develop a targeted approach to addressing vacant and blighted properties. We've talked about this more broadly with becoming thriving and, and all of that, but this is specifically within the neighborhoods. So we want compatible infill, but we want to kind of revitalize the areas that are maybe suffering from vacancies. Um, consider development of a foreclosure prevention program for homeowners. I believe this is something that's actually been used in the past and so it, could it be reinstituted. Um, develop a targeted neighborhood stabilization program that coordinates the revitalization efforts on those focused neighborhoods that have been identified as maybe being the most challenged at this point. Um, and then this may be more of a tactic or an objective, but it's, it's in this list right now about attracting more middle and higher income residents to the city. Um, the next one is um, the goal of emerging as a regional and national destination. Something we heard a lot of in the early rounds was we want to become more of a place where people think, oh, I'm going to go on vacation to Portsmouth. Or if you're in the region, you want to come here um, because there's something unique that you want to visit. And so these strategies are focused on that idea of achieving that. So we want to identify programs and practices to catalyze reinvestment and stabilization. Um, we want to cultivate exciting mis mixed use districts. Like, again, a lot of these go back to place making, creating those places that people identify with and want to come to. Um, expand the programs to market the city outside of town. Um, Maintain and strengthen the city's current, currently stable neighborhoods because that's a big asset for you. Um, provide context responsive parking. Uh, that's something that we've heard a lot from kind of the business community is you want to have places that people can park. Um, and that's something people think about in urban environments. Um, improving the appearance of gateways. This is something that's in your current plan and I think we want to continue that um, and just focus on those as kind of the the doorway into the community. Um, and then increasing safety measures throughout the city, including urban design, police patrol, um, to protect citizens and visitors. Just make it an all around enjoyable experience. Um, the third uh, goal is to be a technolo technologically advanced city and modernize our infrastructure. So these strategies we're focusing on, how do we, kind of how do we capitalize on that next kind of technological innovation. So we talk here about things to modernize your infrastructure. Um, we've got this transatlantic fiber optics cable coming across um, that's going to connect into Virginia Beach. That's a huge opportunity for this region. It's a huge opportunity for the city. So making that technology available and that 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 is a big thing. Um, 
having transparent and open communication systems. So a lot of communities are moving to having, you know, almost all of their what they would call big data from the city is online, and so any citizen can get on and see what's what's happening and see that data and and work with it. Um, Obviously, you've got your, your infrastructure, your water systems, your sewer systems, those utilities that have to be maintained and modernized. Um, your roadways fall into that category as well. Um, and then looking at some maybe administrative capacities, how can you modernize and become more flexible with those so that you can change with information technologies that are available. Um, the evolving fourth goal is providing stewardship of our environment and ecology. And so a lot of these strategies focus on um, your environmental resources, um, <coughs> cleaning up brownfields. You don't have a lot of them that we've identified, but there may be a few out there. Um, supporting habitat restoration, um, using green infrastructure, promoting energy efficiency, reducing carbon emissions, um, and preserving and enhancing the natural features of the community. Any thoughts about the evolving um, yes. goals and strategies? Um, on uh, key, key, everything you have there seems to be aimed at making the city government work better, more efficiently. I I'd like to see something in there that would um, encourage businesses to move here because we've, we've got high-speed fiber optic all over the place mm -hmm. or other things that, that bring the business community into the 21st century, not just the city uh, government. And I think some of them, um, I'm, I may have have to apologize for this because I've been looking at a lot of different ideas under here. Um, but but providing the broadband and the networks and things like that would certainly kind of fall into um, the upgrading the Wi-Fi infrastructure so that there could be public Wi-Fi. Those would be big assets for the business community as well. But we'll do, I'll do a thorough uh, review of those and make sure we've got. I just didn't want this to appear to be myopic in that we're only mm -hmm. looking at what we can do to improve the city government because right. if, if you can attract high-tech companies to come mm -hmm. down here uh, because we've got such high-speed data lines, mm -hmm. then, then that's one, uh, one leg up for us. Yeah. I would like to add to that as well. Um, with, with what Commissioner Youngblood's saying, I think we also need to explore the education side of that yeah. um, with the establishment of partnerships and expansion of those so that we have the um, educational capital and the, that student base here that will also entice those companies uh, okay. to come to the area. Kind of the workforce development aspects Definitely. of it. Okay. Definitely. Yeah, um, Mayor, I was um, going to share that exactly what uh, Mr. Youngblood mentioned is exactly through our IT and I'll say three sentences on it, what we are doing, Mr. Yeah, just okay. go up to the thing. Yeah, go up to the podium. Everything you're saying, we are working <laughs> forward, yes, working with the schools, <laughs> getting ready to lay the fiber all the way to yeah. uh, every school within the city of Portsmouth and throughout the community quickly. Good evening. Um, just as you were alluding to, the regional partnerships that we have with the transoceanic uh, fiber lines will allow the city to be a player with the region to attract the businesses mm -hmm. and also attract the competition with the internet service providers to allow our citizens not only better connectivity, but businesses higher bandwidth at lower cost to them. Yes, sir. I would just like to see it on, mm -hmm. in the written plan here, that's all. Right there. Didn't and need to hijack your... And how are we connecting to the schools that they just agreed for us to do? What are, what are we doing? With the schools creating the municipal network, if we have uh, spoke with them about with the dark fiber connectivity, mm -hmm. that they would be, of course, still segmented, but on the city's network that they would have access to wholesale internet service providers, just like the city would at that point. So we're moving in that direction. Would that also move to an expansion of public Wi-Fi? Yes, I know absolutely. ISPs yes. have brought it, but yes, we will have that. We're working on it. Good. The design is in place. I worked on the other side for a while. Okay. So, 
Okay, so if we're moving on from evolving, um, our final vision theme is equitable. And so we cultivate a vibrant city where equality is evident as we meet the needs of all of our citizens in ways that are fair, meaningful, and empowering. And one of the things that I've reflected on a lot as I've gone through these is a lot of the strategies that occur under any one of these goals actually could apply under all of the goals because to be thriving we need to be equitable we need to be evolving we need to be resilient and kind of we can kind of mix them up and that was the intent is that this doesn't happen in a silo and these are these four vision statements are really the foundation of what we're driving towards what we want the city to be and so for this, we look at the first goal of being to empower citizens and community groups. So we've already talked about having strategies that look at you know, open communications and engaging the public in um, things. But in this one, we're going to talk specifically about what strategies can we use to empower our citizens and community groups. So I have a quick question. Um, as far as the <coughs> vision statements, mm -hmm. are, th are they open for adjustment? Um, we have actually this is the fourth round with these vision statements so they've been through a lot of public vetting we can probably make some slight modifications before the plan is finally adopted so if you have comments on it please let us know um, but these have been fairly thoroughly vetted at this point to that point if you have recommendations on city council uh, pencil it in mm -hmm. And if your handwriting is as bad as mine, you might want to put your name on the document. <laughs> so, that, so that if there's a question in reading the, the document, we can uh, get back. Dr. Patton can. I can, can I could read most of it. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so, to empower citizens and community groups, we want to um, structure governmental organization functions, departments, and decision making related to redevelopment, neighborhoods, and housing to better direct and coordinate policies and activities. Um, we want to, again, add that community development and housing function um, either to economic development and or planning. Um, they're, they're kind of things that you're already doing. It's just giving it some um, prominence. Um, revitalizing the civic leagues, um, establishing the Citizen Leadership Institute in collaboration with TCC um, and the public schools. So this is something that could be done both at the adult and um, youth level that I think would be really valuable. <laughs> Um, hold annual neighborhood summits and this is something that we've talked about and we've gotten really good feedback from the public is it's kind of a dialogue opportunity between the city and the, the neighborhoods so that everybody knows what's happening um, and it's kind of an idea generating opportunity. Um, the second goal for Equitable is to enhance the city services especially to the underserved. Um, um, so this one, we want to locate new public facilities and areas identified as underserved. Um, we've done some location analysis of your community services. You have a fairly good distribution, but there are some places people are asking for community um, rec centers and things like that. So as, as new locations are identified or a relocation, um, definitely consider that. Um, we want to increase awareness of available health programs and services, um, improve access to open spaces, natural areas, and water resources, um, consider the current and potential future locations of public facilities and the in any land use planning activities that happen. Again, because you are a developed community, this is maybe a little bit more sensitive because you're not just saying we're going to build a whole new community, we're actually fitting into to places that already exist. Um, continue the police and fire community recreation programs um, and then improve ease of access to city services. And the, the detailed tactics that we have up here are some examples that came up during the department discussion and review of these preliminary strategies as kind of what's the next level down of how we could approach that. Um, the next one is to seek social and environmental justice um, in policies and practices. And again, this is really, I think it's important that we're seeing this here, but this, to me, this is something that 
we should inherently be doing, um, but it's made its way into the comprehensive plan, and I think that's really powerful. Um, so here we want to think about things like how 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 can we eliminate food deserts? And I've done a study of this. You don't have a bad situation, but there are some places in the city that have lower access to fresh and healthy foods than others. Um, we want to eliminate service deserts, so are there places in the city where people can't gain access to public services? Um, we want to promote remediation of the brownfield sites, um, conduct an analysis to assess areas with limited environmental assets and higher vulnerability. Um, to environmental conditions to identify disparities. This one I feel is a little jargony or a lot jargony and so we're going to work on cleaning up language that is unclear. Um, and then again we want to plan for universal accessibility in a city for all ages and abilities. Uh, we have very diverse age population distributions these days and you know, it used to be we talked about universal accessibility and home design and everything like that. Well, what, what thinking about that does is it makes Portsmouth a place for people to raise families but also to retire in. And that's, I think, what we want to have is a place that's welcoming to everyone, no matter what age that they are. Um, promote resilient and sustainable development and land use patterns. Um, so again, that, that goes to that, are we being equitable in our decisions about where land uses are located um, and how sustainable we are. Um, implement policies that support the growth of, and we're going to get rid of an acronyms, um, small women and minority owned businesses as well as the business enterprises of the, the same kind. Um, we want to, our next goal is to reduce poverty and homelessness. Um, yeah, and this one, um, the the first strategy is to establish and maintain programs that provide support services to Portsmouth poor and disadvantaged populations, um, and then we have some examples of the tactics that were suggested for that that effort. Um, we want to support the development of entry level affordable housing for very low income or disadvantaged populations. There's a great program that's just emerging in Detroit where it's a nonprofit and the city working together and they're working to build small affordable homes that people can purchase, um, but they have to qualify like by being in a specific category um, as someone that they can help enter into home ownership. So there's great examples out there of that. Um, we want to integrate clients with mental health and social services into safe environments, um, expand supply of transitional housing and shelters, and develop a better network of homeless assistance programs by working with local nonprofits. And again, all of these, I think a lot of these to me as a planner seem a little self-evident for some of these other issues. I feel like a lot of the details are gonna come out in the tactics and how we actually can do some of these things. Um, and then the final one is uh, to provide affordable and quality housing. And this goal kind of takes the place of the housing section of the, the current plan. Um, but we want to facilitate retention of affordable housing units. Uh, we want to improve existing housing stock and, cre and increase housing supply. Um, we want to establish programs to connect families and households to financing resources for affordable ownership opportunities. Provide a good quality of housing stock for low income households and provide that universally accessible housing. Um, and one of the things that has been discussed is some of the housing maybe is not up to modern preferences. And so are there programs that we can look at to kind of modernize um, your housing stock without actually changing a single family neighborhood from a single family neighborhood, but just kind of elevating it and modernizing it, maybe making it more energy efficient, um, things like that to um, make housing accessible. So with that, that is the final goal and set of strategies that we have developed. As I mentioned, we have about, I think, a list of somewhere between 250 and 400 additional ideas that could be tactics 
underneath these strategies. And if you all have additional ideas for kinds of programs or actions that you think we need to be taking, we can certainly dig into that <laughs> pile and look and see what we've already got on hand. But if there's a new idea that needs some additional research and fleshing out, you know, that's what we're here for is to try to help find that path to success um, in reaching this vision for you all. Can we go back to um, E4, just the one slide before? Yeah. Um, and, and I know that, you know, the core is always going to be with us, but I don't think we need to just ladder it out on the first bulletin. I, mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. that we could be oh, better served if we speak to just the disadvantaged population. Um, you know, that, that one just... just you know, so the, I'm sorry, the and first is four, mm. I mean, I don't, I don't think we need to identify you know, with the poor. I mean, mm -hmm. we're speaking about disadvantage or maybe we, um, you know, stress. Yeah, population. some other kind of, you know, okay. some other kind of terminology stress. other than mm -hmm. poor. Yeah, than poor. I mean, this is you know, the first line of, you know, what our city is, so. It is not. Yeah. Trying to get rid of that stigma. Yes, yeah. Again, I encourage my colleagues on the city council to give Dr. Pack. Yeah, I have Dr. Wood. Would you contact Councilwoman Simmons? Yes. And she returns on the 18th. Mr. Acting Chairman, would you make sure that your colleagues also get? Mm -hmm. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. uh, any other comments? Thank you so much yes. for the hard work that you're doing. I know I have one comment or question. We're required every five years to update the comprehensive plan mm -hmm. and my long tenure previous to coming back. Is there any opportunity just before, and we've already started, or look at the plan that we have and see exactly what did we accomplish and and be able to provide that yes. to the public and to council that mm -hmm. yes we're updating it, but look at all the things that we accomplished in the plan that was before us yes we we did that at the beginning of the process there's actually a document called the plan audit matrix or something to that effect and we actually did a department by department assessment of each recommendation in the plan and we said it's achieved it's ongoing like it's no longer relevant um, and okay. and so we combed it that way and then what Brian Ryan and I have been working on for the past two months is we went back to that matrix and now we're carrying forward anything that was that remained relevant okay. so it was said if if you know if a recommendation was in there and the department reviewed it and said well this is something that we do every day it's really important to the way we function mm -hmm. we think this should just be carried forward that's what we're doing now with these strategies some of those didn't show up as strategies though some of them will come in as tactics um, because they are at different levels so we're we're changing the structure of your current plan but we tried to retain anything that was still relevant and then there's that accessory document that's on the plant build one Portsmouth website that shows each policy was it accomplished um, or is it something that's no longer relevant for some other reason and then there are a series of comments with each of them mayor would you all like for that to come back before you in a document so that you can sure. have any hand to look at it and mr. Baldwin will get that and we'll get it out to you yep. okay thank you all right thank you all thank you. and Mr. Acting Chair, you're welcome to stay, but if you wanted to adjourn your um, mission. I intend to stay, but I'll, I'll be glad to uh, adjourn our meeting. I just got here, so I think I'll stay a little bit longer. Well, Somebody's officially, I will adjourn the Planning Commission meeting. meeting. And thank you again for agreeing to meet with us tonight. Okay. And again, I urge everybody to get, get their document and document. Yes. Document. Mm -hmm. to include you. <laughs> All right, uh, Mayor, All members right. of council, Mr. Ashby will now um, come before us in regard to the um, panhandling parades and demonstrations oh, update. Good, good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, council members. Uh, tonight, I wanted to update you on the various efforts that have occurred since last I came before you in support of the city's continuing efforts to address panhandling issues as well as the city's continuing efforts to address parades and demonstrations. 
as you all know, collectively, these two issues implicate the First Amendment rights of uh, uh, and civic concerns for all involved. And because of overlapping issues, um, those being primarily issues with regard to permitting, as well as issues um, that relate to the fact that any ordinance or changes and policies we put in place must be uh, non-discriminatory across the board. Um, I wanted to uh, provide you all with an update of what the various departments are doing in a coordinated fashion. First, we uh, acted to engage all the stakeholders to evaluate and analyze current efforts to explore initiatives as well as uh, uh, to investigate different initiatives that would carry out council's objectives. And ultimately, we will memorialize that path forward in implementation of ordinances and policies. Um, as it relates to panhandling specifically since the last time I came before you, we've had a couple of meetings, um, interdepartmental meetings, as well as a couple of meetings with uh, citizens from the community based on you all's uh, requests and comments. I will just talk a little bit about the November 27th meeting with representatives from uh, the Old Town Business Association. And I'll tell you that it was uh, a very good meeting in that we were discussing, had the opportunity to discuss the various business interests. We had representatives from uh, behavioral health care services, social <coughs> services, and the police department. Um, we all had an opportunity to discuss the tensions in terms of trying to address these uh, issues uh, and respecting the individuals involved as well as uh, addressing the uh, city's issues uh, and the public concern. Also in this process, um, at, at, as I think I mentioned to you all, back in late October, I attended the local government attorneys uh, conference and, and gleaned quite a bit of information from that process. Uh, Chief Chapman has been a contributor to the Governor's Task Force on Public Safety and Preparedness, and they have just recently produced uh, some recommendations that we're also taking a look at and integrating into a, a response that we'll have back to you shortly. Uh, and so uh, with that update, I wanted to make you all aware that in the next 45 days, we're going to complete a survey of all of the public spaces and forms for various activities as well as evaluating uh, approaches in downtown as it relates to panhandling. And we will roll out a comprehensive uh, response to these issues in the way of the new ordinances and policies. And uh, staff has suggested that probably the best timing for that is to make that a part of you all's February 3rd uh, Second and third. Second and third, your retreat session. It will give us an opportunity to discuss it as a First Amendment issue and deal with all of those issues collectively as we roll out these last and final pieces. And I will tell you, uh, as I said before, we have been placing, uh, addressing various pieces and with the governor's task force as well as uh, discussions with the public. Uh, we've had some good back and forth and we've uh, promised that we would engage them in terms of our um, ultimate results before we come out, but we'd like to present that to you co comprehensively in a different format where you all have a little bit of time to take a look at it, comment on it, and then roll out the final product. Any questions? Questions? All right, thank you. Uh, this brings brings us to the may, update. May I one other thing, uh, Virginia International Gateway, That's if, if I might. As it relates to Virginia International Gateway, uh, council members, last Thursday was the conclusion of the evidence presented in two litigation matters. Uh, that was Virginia International Gateway uh, versus the city of Portsmouth. As you all may recall, there were two actions, one filed to challenge the real estate taxes and a separate action challenging the personal property taxes. Uh, that, law, uh, that trial began on November 27th and the city uh, through the auspices of outside counsel presented uh, its case to support the fair market value of the property out at Virginia International Gateway. As part of that case, you all may recall that we did file a counterclaim wherein we established the 
uh, value of the property out of VIG at $770 million as of July 2015. Uh, VIG, of course, was challenging the current assessment, which is roughly $361 million. Uh, it was VIG's position that the assessment should be somewhere in the neighborhood of $179 million. On the personal property side, uh, the city presented evidence supporting a fair market value of approximately $48 million <clears throat> um, for the personal property as of January 2015 and approximately $41 million as of January 2016. Um, I believe there was roughly a, a $8 million difference in one year between the city's assessment and that which was proffered by uh, VIG. Um, as of today, on January 19th, uh, all parties are to file post-trial briefs uh, with the expectation that the court will have a ruling uh, sometime in late February or early March. And that's where we are with regard to Virginia International Gateway. Any questions? Okay. We now come to a need for a closed session. We have two items, and let's take the second item first because I understand that Councilman Moody is going to recuse himself from the discussion. That's correct. So if we could have a motion to go with the second paragraph, please. Um, I move to go into closed meeting pursuant to Virginia Code subsection 2.2-3711A.3 for the purpose of discussing the disposition of publicly held real property where discussion in an open meeting would adversely affect the bargaining position or negotiating strategy of the public body, specifically regarding Craney Island. Is there a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion that's been duly seconded. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Cherry? Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. Mrs. Lucas Burke? Yes. Mr. Moody? Yes. Mr. and Mrs. Absent? Dr. Whitaker? Yes. Mayor Rob? Yes. And we're in closed session, and Dr. Pat, would you ask the people who are not involved in this 